to begin by saying what I must most wish to emphasize, and that is that the official authority of teachers has been sadly diminished in the past century. But even so, their moral and spiritual authority is indestructible. And by spiritual authority, I'm not referring to anything connected with religion. I mean the ability to testify to the full dimensions of reality, to witness to the enduring vitality of our myths and memories, our past, our history, which ought really to be sacred. A people without access to this realm of heroic lore is badly hampered in its quest for greatness. Only the teacher, as a kind of shaman, as a nightingale, can guide her pupils toward a region where these presences exist in the dark wood of shared human memory. Now having said this, however, we must admit that in our time, the teacher's ability to be a conduit for these shadowy presences goes largely unrecognized. Our society wants teachers to instruct students in practical matters, <clears throat> how to be adept in current procedures so that the next generation can take over patterns and processes that are already in existence. Thus the task of a teacher is seen to be a work of relevancy, instruction in skills necessary to maintain the status quo, rather than induction into a timeless realm of creative thought. The teacher's traditional role of spiritual guide then, already shaken in the past century by dubious educational theory, has been in our time all but diminished. This determination on the part of both educational authorities and the general public to reduce learning to practical skills is likely to raise questions concerning the necessity of having teachers at all, except to handle electronic media, making their role that of facilitator rather than teacher. Parents show diminishing respect for the school system in general, and less for its faculty. The curriculum is largely in the hands of administrators rather than teachers, and increased emphasis on standardized testing reduces the instructional role even further to educational clerk or drill master. In general, we must say that the moral and spiritual authority of educational institutions has been increasingly diminished with teachers beginning to feel their roles obsolete since their influence on the instructional system seems minimal. The public schools in America are tremendously important to our national destiny. So as I'm saying, despite all this misunderstanding of the role of teachers, to ask what authority they have is a little like asking the same question about mothers or fathers. The teacher's authority is one of those ancient immemorial verities, like a parent's, that we ought to take for granted, trusting that it's simply in the nature of things. And in all of these accounts, the teacher is connected with a kind of magic, or at least some sort of occult powers. This sorcery is an important symbol, for in signifying the ability to enchant, it points to another dimension in the ordinary. Ours in a, is an age of unbelief in mystery, so teachers have to find an equivalent for this magic that can enable the young to pull swords from stones. We've been living in a pragmatic epoch for so long that such talk tends to sound weird. But all our great artists testify to this invisible dimension in life. And just as priests and ministers 
preside over the things in our experience that are of another world, so teachers preside over a spiritual dimension present in this life, one embedded in memory and myth, a necessary part of the human image, even if encountered only in high moments. Teachers have to have some symbol of this spiritual realm to which learning takes us. They have to have some sort of power to induce a mystery. But in a radically neutralized world, they're allowed to use their occult power less and less until finally it disappears. Yet though teachers are increasingly prevented from exercising their full magical powers, and I'm speaking metaphorically, of course, but they are prevented from using their full powers in our schools. We can say at the outset that they are not and cannot be considered mere educational tools or drill masters. They bear a responsibility to the human race that is neither mechanical nor biological. They're emissaries for a heritage other than the DNA structure of the family. Thus, it might be said they provide a way to rise above fate. Only the teacher approaches this wisdom not to possess it, but to be a witness to it and to point toward it, to profess that it exists. I do not mean to argue that teachers have or even should have encyclopedic knowledge. I'm suggesting that as teachers, they have faith, faith in the transforming power of the realm of intangibles to which they bear witness. For they're members of a, of a profession and a calling that guards a cumulative body of knowledge. The discipline represented by the teacher is the tradition of learning, which has the power to transform. And we don't think about that often enough, that power to transform, to transform form those who encounter it. And the transformation the magic worked by teachers satisfies a necessary need in society. Teachers guard, interpret, and transmit the treasures of their discipline. Teachers are the bearers of something they consider more significant than themselves, more important than any method, something of enormous value to the culture. They believe in magic. They believe that people can be changed, and they make themselves vehicles for this transformation. They transmit, attempting to become less and less their private personal selves, and more and more the conveyor of what they bear across to others. But I would argue that teachers are able to beckon their students to a new kind of knowledge, something not innate, something not already in the pupil, but stemming from another territory, not simply a memory hidden deep within their souls, but an, an enhancement that transforms. If teachers are the bearers of what is worth saving from the past, what they convey is memorable, because in it is a record of humanity exceeding itself.